Hi, everybody. Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Our topic today is financial services is a big segment, and AMD is right in the thick of it. Now, before we get to our topic, how about we give our guests a moment to introduce themselves? Hi, my name is Serena. I'm in the server business unit at AMD, and I actually focus on financial services. And so, you know, trying to make sure that all of the FSI companies out there are aware of Epic and what we can do for them. Serena, before we jump into the financial services and really what it is, how about a little more backstory on yourself? Yeah, sure. So I actually started out more so on the AI side of things. Um, so that was kind of my background. I was doing a lot of AI software um, at AMD and at other places. And I figured that there would actually be a pretty good intersection between AI and FSI. Um, and so I wanted to see what that space was about, um, see what kind of companies are out there and what they're doing with our chips. Um, and it's been a fascinating journey. There's a lot for me to learn, but it's been great. Okay, one side AI, the other side financial <laughs> services. Yes. Where's the intersection there that you chose FSI? <laughs> Well, to be fair, FSI is actually one of our biggest verticals of focus at AMD, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, there's just so much opportunity there for us and a lot of room for us to grow. And of course, AI being such a nascent space, there's so many applications and use cases out there um, in the banking companies that can take advantage of AI. And so it was kind of interesting to see, okay, um, you know, from a software perspective, I know what's going on. I know what a lot of the other cloud customers are interested in. And it's a little different with banking because, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations. Um, so that is the intercept. And there's so much there to talk about, so much there to unpack. Let's talk about financial services. What is it? How does it relate to AMD? Yeah, that's a good question. So financial services is actually a very large segment and it has, you know, different segments there within itself. So we've got things like um, capital markets, you've got banking, you've got insurance, and you've got payments. And what's interesting about the FSI space is that each of those categories has their own nuances, their own care abouts, and that's what keeps the whole field very dynamic and very exciting. Now, AMD has a play in it because a lot of these guys are using a lot of CPUs. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. And so for us, there's a lot of opportunity there to kind of get a lot of these FSI customers off of the competition and over to AMD Epic because we know that our products can give them better performance, better price performance, all that good stuff. Serena, talk to me a little bit more about how it relates to AMD. How is AMD playing a part in FSI and why do these banks care about their CPU? Yeah, so actually at a lot of these big banks, and the reason I pick the banks is because they actually make up 60% of that FSI segment, right? So out of the several categories I'd mentioned, they're kind of the, the big players that we're targeting. About 10% of the big bank's revenue actually goes towards their IT spend. And so you can imagine that the size of the revenues that they're bringing in um, correlates to quite a large number of CPUs that are being purchased. And that means that there's significant opportunity for us to come in and kind of get them off of their previous generations of the competitor CPU. Now, we play into it because our CPUs are good for a plethora of workloads. Um, we kind of split up workloads into two categories when I when we think about FSI. Um, so you've got the general IT pieces of things, and then you've got vertical specific workloads. And so general IT, as the name implies, it's not specific to FSI. Um, things like virtualization, database, CRM, those are you know kind of part and parcel of every vertical's uh, use cases. Um, and AMD has a huge play there because we are able to provide significantly better performance, right? Performance per core, whether you want to measure it with spec in, spec FP, um, virtualization performance is excellent. We can, you know, show all the great VMark scores. Um, and so for a lot of the infrastructure folks that are making these kinds of decisions, uh, we have all of the metrics there out, you know, in the public already um, that show that you can consolidate the servers that you have um, and run your workloads on fewer servers. So that means reducing your capital costs. That also means reducing your power. Um, and also, of course, you know, it's not just an on-prem story that we have with AMD. Uh, we are actually here at AWS reInvent because we have our latest seventh generation of the instances um, that are based off of our fourth gen Epic CPUs. Um, and so the performance of those instances um, is fantastic, very compelling results. Um, and for some of those vertical specific workloads like Quantlib, right? So if you're in quantitative analysis or you're running risk calculations, those are very um, parallelizable workloads. Those are very floating point heavy. And you can actually do a lot of that computation on our CPUs faster, cheaper. 
Now, the banks, do they care about the processors that they're using on cloud? Yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't want to be able to run their workloads for cheaper, do it faster, and have it cost less? I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? A lot of the times when I think about, you know, cheaper, everybody's like, oh, well, you're paying less, but the quality isn't there. But that's not the case with AMD because while you're paying less, you're getting better performance for processing your workloads. Uh, there's so much more with AMD when you not only utilize it within the cloud and on-prem that it's hard to quantify some of the results, but you do have benchmarks, you do have performance data that shows them that they can ultimately do this cheaper, faster, and better. Yes, absolutely. Talk to me about the AMD Epic processors. Yeah, so our AMD Epic processors are our server or data center class of CPUs. Um, we are on our fourth generation at the moment, so previously codenamed Genoa. And this is the successor to our third generation Epic CPU codenamed Milan. And so we're very proud of Genoa, our fourth gen Epic CPUs. Um, the performance that we're seeing is excellent. And so we're on a pretty good uphill trajectory from you know here on out as well. Well, we talked about AMD can go on-prem and cloud. Let's talk about AMD as it relates to compliance. On-prem, I think in a lot of cases, you can easily be compliant because you control the atmosphere, you control the environment, you control the CPUs, the servers, everything in there. But how does compliance relate not only on to on-prem, but in the cloud? I actually want to take that in a bit of a different direction, if I can, uh, because we are talking about FSI and it is a very regulated industry, lots of rules. And one of the things I want to comment on is there's something called the Basel Committee, okay, Basel Committee on Banking Standards. They have all these rules and frameworks in place in order for banks to you know, meet certain requirements so that they can avoid, uh, you know, issues that they've seen in the past. So. Um, in 2008, there was the global financial uh, recession, right? And what had happened was there were a lot of banks that saw significant losses on their trading books um, because they just didn't set aside enough capital. And so there's actually calculations and suites of rules, um, something called the FRTB. So it's a long acronym for Fundamental Review of the Trading Book. But um, it's important because those calculations are things that banks need to do in order to be compliant, right? Um, these calculations don't make the banks any money. Um, in fact, it means that they have to set aside more capital, right, to mitigate the risks of the trading products that they have. Um, but what Epic is able to do for those folks that are needing to run FRTB is, you know, we can do it faster because we have that superior computing capacity, but we can also do it cheaper, right, because you don't have to buy as many servers in order to do the same calculations. Um, and that's how AMD Epic kind of relates to compliance, especially in the FSI space. And there are actually other examples as well of calculations that folks have to run just in order to you know, meet the rules and the regulations. Help me understand the calculations. That are, are these a daily calculations that need to be made on how much needs to be set aside? Is it weekly? Yeah, so it's something that they will have to calculate overnight. Um, and actually, you bring up an interesting point because, you know, they don't earn any brownie points if they do the calculations under an hour versus if they just run the calculations overnight, say, six, seven hours. Um, and so for them, their care about is not necessarily like I need the lowest latency CPU, um, but just to be able to do it effectively enough, but also while doing it as cheaply as possible. Basically. Well, you said they're not making any money off exactly. it. So they need to run this faster in order to save money. If it's running 24 hours, costing them, we'll just use a small number, $1,000 versus running one hour that's costing them $1. Yeah, they're going to save exactly. some money. They're going to have more money in their pocket and not spend. Precisely, precisely. And so what's interesting as well is, you know, the Basel III framework was actually just implemented in January of this year. Um, but as folks know, these kind of regulations, they'll continue to change and um, they'll be, you know, altered or adjusted over the course of the next several years as, as things shift. Okay, we talked about the compliance for it. What about the security for FSI? Yeah, so we actually have a very significant suite of uh, security features for AMD EPIC. So we have a couple of things. We have SME, which is the secure memory encryption, and we have something called SEV, which is secure encrypted virtualization. And so we've had both of those ever since 2017 for our Epic product line. And over the course of the next several years, we've kind of added new features, security features to SEV, right? So that's all about virtualization and keeping your data um, nice and secure. 
So in addition to SCV, you have ES, SCVES, which is uh, encrypted state. You've got SCV SMP, which is in secure nested paging. And all of those features kind of come together to just secure um, not just your data, but also your memory for your virtualization environments. And one of the other things that I should mention is um, these security features are not something you have to pick and choose. It's not something you have to pay extra for. It's just part of the Epic feature set. And no matter whether you're picking an 8-core, 16, all the way up to 96 or 128, um, you can get all of the amazing features. Serena, I didn't know that AMD played a part with FSI at all. I didn't even actually know it was a section of it. <laughs> I always thought of AMD as the processor. Serena, can you share with any customer examples that are utilizing AMD FSI? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a few that I can publicly talk about, um, and these include folks like BNP Paribas, we've got Emirates NBD, we've got DBS. And actually what we were able to do for them um, as AMD and the reasons for why they chose to deploy Epic in production include things like being able to achieve better performance while reducing their virtualization licensing costs, being able to reduce their power and reduce their cost while transitioning their virtualization environment from their older platforms to the latest AMD-based infrastructure. So you can kind of tell that there's a common theme here of AMD Epic being able to provide customers the ability to do more for less, right? Less power, less cost. Did you help the customers actually migrate or help them move over to this newer you know, processor or environment? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, I didn't know that AMD does all of that. Like I said, I'm just thinking <laughs> AMD, you're the processor. You're, de But you help the FSI customers ultimately move to a faster performance. That's right. So in many of these cases, the customers themselves are very sophisticated. So it's not always that they do need us to kind of go in and help them walk them through the process. Um, but of course, we do have engineering support on the AMD side to help either provide guidance or kind of um, bring them through the process of migrating those. Um, though in general, the transition from, you know, the previous platforms to the AMD based ones tends not to be, um, you know, fraught with a lot of friction or struggle at, as far as our customers have experienced so far. Serena, talk to me about what's next for AMD FSI. Well, one of the big things that we're trying to achieve is to raise awareness. We were actually at a quant conference a couple of weeks ago and folks did not understand why AMD was there at all. We were the only hardware vendor on the floor and they're like, why are you guys even here? <laughs> right. Um, and so our big story is trying to educate folks, right? Trying to reach out to the application developers and really instill in them the fact that processor choice matters. And if you do, you know, take that leap of faith to transition or give AMD Epic a shot, we can prove to you that there are so many gains that you're going to see right, and performance and all the other metrics, the, the power. And a lot of it is just education because, you know, our competitor has been in the space for a very long time. That's what a lot of folks have grown comfortable with and that's what they know. Um, but, you know, it's kind, kind of time for a switch um, and for us to just prove that AMD Epic deserves to be in this space as well. How does one find out more information about AMD FSI? Yeah, so we have lots of information on our websites, um, amd.com. Um, but of course, we also have an excellent team that supports all of our FSI customers. And we would be happy to talk to anybody and everyone about this. Serena, thank you so much for educating me on AMD and all the other things that it does besides processors <laughs> and FSI. I really appreciate it. No, thank you so much. All right, this has been awesome. Take care. Well, everybody, this has been another awesome episode on the John Meyer Podcast. Talking about financial services is a big segment, and AMD is right in the thick of it. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify, because guess what? We're out of here.